Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss instructional strategies for mathematics in the intermediate grades, specifically problem solving. Not all word problems promote problem solving skills. In this lesson, you will learn the characteristics of a good word problem, when it is best to give a word problem to promote problem solving skills, and how to process the student's varied solutions. The problem solving strategy involves students being challenged to collaboratively solve the real world math problems that they have not yet previously encountered. It is student centered, promotes critical and creative thinking skills, problem solving abilities, and communication skills. The integral part of this strategy is the time given to the students to struggle with the problem, and its beauty is in the varied solutions that the students would produce. There are three main elements of problem solving that you should take note of. One is the word problem. Two is the time given for the students to struggle with the problem. And three, the mathematical discourse that happens during the struggle and during the processing of the student-generated solutions. First, let us talk about the word problem. In many Filipino classrooms, word problems are given at the end of the lesson. And the students are expected to answer them by applying the concept or skills that have just been taught to them. In most cases, the teacher first demonstrates how to solve a problem. And then, the students would independently answer a similarly structured problem. In this practice, the students are not doing problem solving. They already know how to solve the problem. They know that the just taught lesson is the key to solve the problem and they pattern their solutions to what the teacher has demonstrated. In using problem solving strategy, the problem serves as the starting point of the learning experience. Therefore, it is given at the beginning of the lesson. The challenge for you as the teacher is to choose or create a problem that can be solved using the target concept of the lesson at hand but can also be answered using previously learned knowledge and skills. How you present the problem also matters especially for the elementary grades. It is not always helpful to introduce the problem by posting it on the board. Doing this may intimidate some of the students and reading and comprehension skills may intervene. Instead, it is suggested to narrate the problem in a storytelling manner to engage the learners. Encourage the students to imagine the scenario and allow them to clarify information if they find some details confusing. By showing drawings or real objects might help. Next is the time given to struggle with the problem. The goal is for the students to collaborate, to share their ideas with each other to come up with a solution. So we must encourage the students to use their previously learned knowledge and skills to solve the problem and to communicate their ideas with their classmates through words, equations, or illustrations. So it is natural for the students to find this phase burdensome, especially when it is their first time to engage in such an activity. Critical thinking and communicating ideas are not easy tasks after all. So, it is the task of the teacher to encourage the students to think out of the box. 
So you can tell the students that there is more than one way to solve the problem. So they do not need to worry about their solution being wrong as long as every step they did is meaningful to solving the problem. And lastly is the mathematical discourse. So this is the most exciting element of the problem-solving strategy. While students are working in small groups to solve the problem, you get to move around and enjoy the mathematical talk that the students are engaging in. Of course, you may intervene in the students' discussions when corrections and clarifications are needed. But, we should be careful not to give hints. It may be tempting to do so, especially when the students are struggling. But don't. As you encourage your students to think, believe that they can actually do. Allow yourself to be amazed at how the students would defend their thinking. Correct each other's ideas and figure things out on their own. Remember, all the student-generated solutions, as long as correct, can be directed to the concept or skill that is the objective of the lesson. So the challenge is how you would process those various solutions, make sense of each of them, and use them to generalize or come up with a solution that makes use of knowledge or skill that is the objective of the lesson. In this phase comes the importance of the teacher's fluency of the subject matter. So that is about the problem solving. Thank you for watching and I hope you have learned something.